Happy Friday and welcome to another edition of Husker Online Headlines. Sean Callahan, Steve Sippel uh, with you every week as we go through all the headlines of the week. And before we get into it, Husker Online Headlines brought to you by Ellerbrock Norris. They've been helping Nebraska business owners protect their purpose for over 120 years with risk management solutions built for local businesses. Ellerbrock Norris partners with you on commercial insurance, group benefits, business exit planning, safety, and more. Start thinking long-term with your business and create a risk management strategy to protect it. Are your employee benefit costs going through the roof? Talk to Ellerbrock. Are workplace injuries skyrocketing your workers' compensation costs? Talk to Ellerbrock. Hoping to retire in the next 10 years and sell the business to key family, key employees, or a friendly competitor? Talk to Ellerbrock. Ellerbrock is helping you protect your purpose, whether it's your business and the employees in it, your life outside of work, or your future retirement goals. Head to ellerbrock norriscom slash Husker Online today to get your free risk evaluation. Thank you, Ellerbrock Norris. All right, Steve Sibble, let's get into it. Headline number one, the buzz is real, and, 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 and I'll, I think we experience, experienced a lot of it. Last night, um, we, we had our first ever Husker Online live show with the studio audience. And I've told you, I've been doing events all week around the state. I've been in Pender. I've been in Columbus. I've been in Bellevue. Packed houses everywhere I've been. And we saw something similar here again with our show at the Zipline Beer Hall in Six Pine Lake Road. Um, it was a lot of fun, first of all. like I think we all had an expectation doing a live show, what it was going to be. It's there's challenges to it. There's a technical component to it. And, you know, we survived, I think all that as well as you could for your first time doing it in a limited capability, but man, just seeing the people being out there with so many great Husker fans, you could not only, I mean, you, you just felt the excitement and the buzz. Yeah, you really did. I, I, I never know what to think because what am I getting at here? These fans are so loyal. I mean, it hasn't, it's been sort of a rough ride, obviously, but you don't get that. You don't, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like that a little bit. It's a little halting the optimism, but oh yeah, last yesterday in that arena, in that, in that venue, you felt excitement and positive energy. It was positive energy. So yeah, this is, it was fun. I, and I, I and Sean, I didn't know what to expect. I, I've, you know, as you know, I've done those shows in Omaha going back years, 15 years. And sometimes they're, they're duds. Be, they can be. Where you go and it's like you talking to an empty bar and they're yeah. just like disgruntled workers listening to the show. <laughs> I don't know that it was that. Because no one's in the bar. <laughs> I mean, I'm not painting that picture. But sometimes there was like 15 or 12 people. Last night, I don't know. There's you 200. couldn't have fit another person in this place. Was there 200? Night. It pushed 200. Yeah. And it was the largest crowd they've ever had at this zip line. I think it, the only other one that would be close was their opening day when they opened that restaurant for the first day. I wonder about that. Um, but there's just no, I mean, the overflow to the patio, to the outside, to the inside. And, you know, they surprised everybody. We didn't know they were going to have a taco bar. They brought, they brought in a taco bar. Um, Look at know. people. And it was so, they're so friendly. I mean, I don't want to say everybody was just so happy. Yeah, I don't want to sound corny, but it, it was really a happy occasion. People are upbeat and they should be. I think they should be. It's it's a great time of year. It is. It's football's almost upon us. The guy with the sunglasses and the beer there in the gray t-shirt, he came up to me and he said, Hey, my dad and I, we listen to the show and we talk about what you guys talk about all the time. And he goes, We love when you don't talk about sports sometimes. So oh. he's like don't like it's kind of funny and fun when you guys have fun and, and talk about stuff you want to talk about what's happened to american cities <laughs> i won't tell you what i saw outside in front of starbucks this morning yeah, at yeah. 7 30 on 12th and p <laughs> let's not do this let's not get into that well, let's talk about um zip line um yeah line out the door i was shocked when i walked in shocked you, now i had talked to you briefly on the phone you said it's packed and i was like okay packed well i'll 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 be the judge of packed and it was packed i mean it was it was amazing. So in, in, I thought the show went off well and people seem to enjoy themselves. So we'll probably be doing it again. Yeah. Right? I, mean, I think it's in the works to do another sh live. Oh, there's show. a good, those are good shots of this. Like we're not going to do like a live show every week. It's just not feasible. <laughs> you want to do one every week? No. Sean? <laughs> Somebody, but because you know, I, I set up the equipment and the tech. Yeah. That's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. We just don't show up. But I mean, I, I just show look up at Carter. 
here's the thing I want people to know. I just show up and sit down and talk. It's easy for me. It's not easy for you. I mean, I you have to do so much. So no, you can't. We can't possibly do it every week. Would we? No, and possibly like the, the bye week or something down the road. I think we're definitely going to do another one. And obviously, Zipline, they're the first ones to really believe in us and want to do this. And God bless them. I mean, they they saw the give Ethan and, and, and Garen and the guys over there a lot of credit. I had no idea what to expect in terms of venue. And I had a picture in my mind that was all wrong. I just thought it would, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know exactly what to expect. It's a beautiful place. It's interesting. It's pretty simple, but it's it's sort of this. I like simple. And, Our good friend, but Matt. it's tasteful. It's tastefully okay. Here's the way to put it: it's tastefully simple. It's well, tastefully our simple. friend Matt Larson, a listener to the show that owns a company, Change House, he built that place for them. He the space for it's zip tasteful. Line. It's nice. He did our kitchen for us. He's a good friend of ours. His wife went to high school with my wife Lisa. Is your is your kitchen tastefully simple? Yes, it's timeless. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. I, I, you don't have to tell me that. Other than making the decision to get rid of the wine fridge that was left there and, and replacing it with basically a beer fridge <laughs> <laughs> for zip lines, right? Well, you are from South Omaha, Sean. So. Well, do, do you do I strike you as a guy that needs a wine fridge? More now than you used to no, be. No, no. <laughs> as you it's escalate, like the scene from as your career has moved in a in a good direction, a little bit more of that, but no. It's like the scene from Wayne's World when in, when Wayne's girlfriend gives him a gun rack for his birthday, and she's like, he's like, I don't even own a gun, <laughs> let alone enough guns to own a gun rack. <laughs> That's me with wine. I mean, like, yeah, I'll have a glass <laughs> yeah, of wine here and there, but yeah, I'm not, there. I, I, I didn't need a full wine fridge, and so we basically have a zip line can i tell you something and this is the dead truth i've never had a glass of wine in my life get the i have no that's the dead truth now at church you never drank the church wine even i've had maybe a drink or two in my life i've i've actually never drank they don't really do that anymore but i mean yeah i've never had a glass of wine i can just tell you that unequivocally no i've I, i mean it's unequivocal i've never had a glass of wine get out of here never not it's wine. not like I seek it out. I mean, yeah. not one time. It's kind of weird. I thought I I thought about it in recent years. I just never have had it. I've taken drinks. I like lorries and and stuff like that. But no, I've never had. I've never. Had. You'd have to invest so much time and money to even kind of understand them all. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, when I hear people talk about, it, I'm kind of blown away. And I'm okay, just more like, okay, zip light. Yeah, zip copper. I mean, just like something simple. Like yeah. I don't I don't need to like have to learn an entire. I mean, look, wine is good, great, but I just, yeah, we don't, we don't have the wine fridge anymore. I like Morgan and Coke and Coors Light and margaritas. That's what I like. <laughs> and you got a margarita last night. It was a good one, too. And you were pressured on air to, to I, put yeah, it down. The next time we do this, I was better on the air after the margarita. There's no doubt about it. I, I Somebody got, said that we were drunk yelling at each other <laughs> on the air last night. We were not night. drunk yelling. Now, we were, might have been talking louder because it was so loud in there, and we thought we needed to talk loud. Which I realized we didn't need to. Like, these microphones, but we, we couldn't hear each other. Right. It's loud. It's loud. It's pretty loud. Like, these microphones don't pick up the crowd noise, which shocked me. I didn't know what to expect with 200 people uh-huh. hooting and hollering if the mics would be affected. Well, we by got that. into each other a little bit, you and Robin, two-on-one, the old man, like you tend to do, when, when I um, suggested that I'm not... I don't want to go all in on the notion that if they would lose a game early, that everything's going to unravel. And I, I stand by it. I, I, I just think that's a that's more of a fan discussion, it seems like. The fans will unravel. I don't want to say that about this current set of players under a new new head coaching staff. I don't know that they'll unravel. Like if they like the, the discussion I hear out there is, God, if they lose to Colorado, it could really go bad. No, why? What if they lose to Colorado? Why, why can't they just win five straight after that? You know, it doesn't. They don't. It doesn't have to unravel. That's what I'm saying. I did get nail the fact checkers of our fine show and website. Oh, I had, boy, a, I had a glaring mistake. What I said: Nebraska hasn't won three games in a row since 2016. They, they won three games in a row last year. <laughs> <laughs> so I needed, I needed to rebuff that and say they've only won three games in a row one time since yeah, rebuff 2016. That. i'm rebuffing that statement rebuff and that. owning yeah. my air i should have caught it right away actually well you almost forget because louisiana tech was a win 
And then they beat like Purdue and Northwestern. I think bang, bang, bang. I think you messed that up too. They, they, no, they won. I think they won two loss and then they won three in a row. Oh, after Michigan, they won three right. in a row. After Michigan, yeah. they won three in a row. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, they, but they've only done it one time since 2016. So there that's a fair request. Yeah. Can they win three in a row and, and get some? How about four in a row? Yeah. I, I don't, this is kind of now getting to the current conversation. I love this. Satterfield Marcus today said a lot of the, what they're doing is situational football and they do the situational football, like, like third, third down at the six yard line with six seconds to go. What are we going to do? Stuff like that. And they're doing it with, with all these close games in mind. They're going to, they're going to have to win close games. If they're going to get to where you want them, where I want them, where everybody wants them. They're not going to, they're not going to steamroll many. Who are they going to steamroll? I mean, UTEP and Northern maybe. Iowa. Yeah, uh, you hope. Um, but but coaches, the, let's put it this way: in the Big Ten, who are they going to steamroll? Well, coaches that make over five million dollars a year, you don't get steamrolled very often, right? Who, who are they going to roll over Indiana and Bloomington? No, they won't. I mean, if they if Nebraska wins that game, it'll probably be. I'd be shocked if they w would win by more than the 12. games resemble more the NFL. I mean, in, yeah. a, in the NFL, you yeah. see like a a bad team beat the chiefs. Yeah. I mean, the Raiders beat the chiefs on Christmas day. Right. So they're emphasizing situational football. Satterfield said there that rules doing a better job than he's ever seen of emphasizing it. And I think he emphasized it last year too. Oh, I know he did. Cause we talked about it. All but right. Hold your Satterfield thoughts. All right. Um, all right before we get into headline number two, Husker Island headlines brought to you by our good friends at CH health clinic and the Family Health Center on 40th and Yankee Hill Road. I'm actually a patient there. Uh, use multiple different providers in that facility. And then it, you know, having a relationship with your primary care provider uh, can help you stay on top of your health. Um, it, you know, they, they, they get to know you, uh, your tendencies. Uh, I've been able to get to know all of my providers very well. And, you know, they help you stay on top of important things for your life. And they make it so easy. Not only can you go there um, for a walk-in, uh, priority care appointment uh, without a calling ahead. Uh, they, obviously, your regular family checkups can be done there. They have a dermatologist, former Husker wide receiver Tyler Evans on site there. You can get x-rays, lab work done there. Uh, they even have a pharmacy on, uh, on site. My wife had to go in there the other day uh, for an appointment. They were able to give her her medication right there on site at the pharmacy right as she walked out of the building, which saves you that unwanted trip to the the, the box store pharmacy where you might have to wait another hour to get home. Sure. Um, so th they've got it all figured out at CHI health clinic, particularly the one there on 40th and Yankee Hill here in South Lincoln, but they've got facilities and centers all over the state of Nebraska. Thank you again to CHI health for sponsoring us here on the Husker online show. Okay. Headline number two, uh, you know, let's get back into Satterfield because he did have some interesting comments uh, that, you know, the situational work, they get this extra time in camp to do more things. Yeah. You know, and let's face it. This team is just further ahead right now than they were a year ago. Um, the roles are established. The culture is more established. Mm -hmm. um, they just understand what they're doing. And you just get a better feeling about this camp right now than, say, where it was a year ago when everything was still brand new and you're just trying to kind of figure things out. They can lean in harder on pure football elements, pure elements that are tied to winning and not big picture culture type things like this is the way it should be done in the locker room. You, you move out of those discussions into, you know, what are we going to do on third and two with, with 17 seconds left in the game at the opponents 12, you know, that that's what you get into more just things that directly affect winning. So that's, um, I think, I think that's some of it. Satterfield, was tremendous today talking about a number of things. Now we have heard that Dante Dowdell, we have heard from our sources that Dante Dowdell's coming, that he's, that he's picked up steam in camp. Satterfield did nothing to pour cold water on that. He said that he's getting to the second level. The DBs don't want to tackle him. He's better in pass protection. He's picked up pass protection. You can use him on third down. I'm not suggesting he's, yeah, he didn't go. He's a young guy, and he's still he's swimming in it. He, didn't we, didn't, we didn't get that. <laughs> he didn't use the term swimming in it. We also didn't get that he's necessarily on the same plane as the big three, Emmett Johnson, Ramir Johnson, and Gabe Irvin. 
but it feels like he's pressing them now, right? They got four. He has said that. They have four. Now, where's Ives? Ives isn't there yet. Mackay Nelson. I mean, it, I mean, it, they have options, at least. It's, when you have five three, and six, yeah. When you have three or four guys, and even now five and six, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a solid room. And can, now the question is, how are they going to distribute it? And can they get you? You made a great point. Can these backs get more than what's blocked? Yeah, that's a big part of it. Um, getting to the second level, then past the second level. And now sometimes that means getting by a guy with a juke or running him over, then going, then going. Then now, now you've gone from a six yard gain to a 16 yard gain, or maybe a 27 yard gain or a 40 yard gain. It's a big difference and it's meaningful. Um, so yeah, that's what that's what you wonder, and I think these guys are capable of it. I, what I always say about them is, is it's a good group. There's, it's not elite. They don't have that sort of elite Quinson Juckins talent or Travion Henderson, but or you know, they could. Have, I mean, Corum. Now they're tougher than hell, though. These guys are all tough runners, physical runners that you know you're going to get everything from them. And I and I've seen backs at Nebraska where I wouldn't say that. And, okay, but these but guys are that. Like Divino Zigbo in 2018, you mm-hmm. didn't know he was going to be a thousand yard guy. No, I didn't know so he averaged seven yards a carry. It can emerge. Year. Yeah, yeah. You, well, maybe like one guys of those can like Amir Abdullah was crowded with Aaron Green and Braylon Hurd. He was considered the third guy true. of that group. It's and true. both those guys transferred to Kentucky and TCU and yeah. became starters. And Amir Abdullah emerged as you know, an all big, ten, all big 12, all big 10 level back. I don't disagree with you at all. I'd love to see it. I, but it can happen. I'd I love mean, to see a thousand yard rusher break out of that. Bunch. When you get reps and kind of get in a rhythm, which it's just, this it hasn't happened. I mean, very few running backs at Nebraska since Divino Zigbo have been good enough to get into a rhythm. Right. I'd love to see and it. the teams for Nebraska. I, I think the way Nebraska plays, you, you get down or the games get high stress. You know, it's really Start hard throwing. To, to to just slow the game down and do what Michigan did to beat Penn State running it what 30 sometimes in a row. Well they in the second half Michigan didn't throw a pass at Penn State. They'd never attempted a pass. Now Nebraska's not ready to do that. <laughs> I can only imagine if you were covering that game in a columnist role how excited you'd be to write about that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Michigan went into Happy Valley. That's a good defense, by the and way. Jim Harbaugh was sitting in a hotel bar watching the game. Yeah, and Sharon Moore called a run play on every single play of the second half. That's a flex. That is a that is that is called making a statement to a lot of different people. Now, so Nebraska's not equipped to do that. Maybe someday they will be again. You know, one one thing is we have a head coach here that would be very interested in doing that. He would be. If you could do it, he'll do it. Well, go back to 20, um, 2012, Nebraska-Penn State and Memorial Stadium. They had a fullback, C.J. Zimmer, that was lead blocking, and Amir Abdullah. They yeah. ran the same toss sweep play like over 30 times in that game. The that exact right? same play. Right? The little t- and the yeah. fullback kept getting out to chip the linebacker. Oh, that's beautiful. And you know, I, I know just got the chills. Ron Ron Brown was the running backs coach. And he told the, you that at the Big Red Breakfast that I remember uh, back when we did those things. Um, he told the crowd, he goes, Yeah, we literally called the same play like 35 times. A pitch play to Amir with with Zimmer. With Zimmer blocking. Chip blocking the, and taking out the mic. And so making that mic linebacker run sideline to sideline with the fullback getting him. And, <laughs> oh, and the four-yard runs, were turn, they were turning into seven, eight-yard. There, yeah. there weren't a lot of home runs, right. but it was a lot of six to eight-yard runs. Oh, that's Sean. Come on now. I mean, they, they, went, they went 10 that year? Well, they, that was the team that played for the – yeah, they went 10 and they 2. Went, yeah, they won 10 that year. And then they got beat by Wisconsin. That's how you win 10. You have that kind of physicality, Sean. Where you can just throw it down people like that. Yeah. Yeah, you just they even know what you're doing. They still they still can't stop it. That's old school Nebraska. All right, before we take it to headline number three, Husker on headlines brought to you by Omaha Steaks. It is the anniversary sale right now. Omaha Steaks they're giving fifty percent off right now site wide. But guess what? We're giving you another thirty dollars off. You have to use the promo code Huskers Online. That's Huskers with an S online. And we're going to take $30 off at omahasteaks.com. That's on everything you see here. Um, and you'll see the discounted price is already on there. 
Um, some are more than 50% off. It might say 60% off, but then we're taking another $30 off that. That's steaks, that's chicken, that's burgers, that's side items, um, that's desserts, you name it. OmahaSteaks.com has you covered. And, you know, we're hitting to that season, simple, where you're tailgating, you want to bring some good meats down to Lincoln. Check it out, OmahaSteaks.com. That promo code is Huskers Online for an additional $30 off these highly already discounted boxes of meat and they'll deliver it right to you right in a cooler oh god why wouldn't you do this why wouldn't you do it it's tell well, me why you wouldn't do it filet mignon burgers delivered to your house <laughs> oh boy That's i need to send deal. some to you I'll, i can handle do you, do you own a grill yes i own a i own two grills you, you turn you. it on Mm, or does, does greg manage your grills too no, no missing tooth greg does not he just does my engine work okay greg i'm the cycle and the and the truck greg was something else he brought the harley davidson sign last night for and you had and goggles on oh yeah missing tooth greg's a gem and he's a, a extremely intelligent gem. he made a, a it was a big week for missing tooth greg he got written about in your column yeah he got some airtime, and he was at our show. Yeah, he loves this stuff, and he's and he's he's excited for the season. Okay, we're sending him some Omaha steaks. Oh, that's a now that's an idea. Yeah, he'd appreciate it. I think he would eat them. Yeah. All right, let's get into headline number three. Um, we we've been doing this one all August. Our fall camp movers and shakers, um, talking about guys that have kind of made some climbs, making some noise. Um, we've hit on Dante Dalda. Yeah, we kind of hit as the a, big as one. a name. Yeah that could be making a little bit of noise right now. Um, you know, Jalen Lloyd, um, you heard him today. He went from 158 pounds to now 178, almost 180. And he's still running today at practice. He ran 22 miles per hour. <laughs> 158. That's what he came in at. <laughs> That's really little. That's really little. So now he's represent more representative size. He's clearly a huge part of the rotation. Um, so yeah, no, no, yeah, he looks definitely looks bigger. Um, so yeah, you could call him a mover and shaker. I would call. I'm convinced. I think we've covered it quite a bit, but I but I still think I need to be convinced on this stuff more than you do. I need to hear it more than one time, and I need to hear a little more detail. Vincent Shavers is a mover and shaker. Oh, he in the he's in the rotation. That Casey Fritton, our photographer, posted today. Just looking at him, he does not look like a freshman. He's he's under he's going to be playing. I, I I just wonder what that will look like when he'll be used. That sort of thing. We've seen guys. Who was the kid that transferred to Michigan from Columbus? I'm drawing a blank on his Ernest name. Hausman. Hausman, when he first started playing as a true freshman, it was a little shaky. It was. Now he came on though as the season progressed. It looked better and better, and then at the end of the season, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. But it wasn't like that early. It wasn't like – and early in that season, like North Dakota. Remember North Dakota? Remember some assignment misses. Yeah. Remember that game against that team from down south, Georgia Southern, that came in here? Yeah, uh, no, no, it was not – I don't know that he was fully ready, but then he got better and better. So what shavers, what's it going to look like early, you know? Well, can they simplify it enough where he can play fast? Yeah. And, That's the key because yeah. he is fast. You know he can play fast, but can you get him to play fast? Because you don't want to overload it with these young guys. No, you don't. And it's – and I now, would you agree with me, too, that this is a complicated defense. It's not super simple. It's so hard to scheme against, though, because you don't – you know, it's not a easy read for offenses. You yeah. don't know where – the Mike linebacker is going to be. You don't know where that fourth rusher is going to come from. Where a four three was pretty balanced. She kind of had a pretty clean look up front. Mm -hmm. The three three five is all over the place. Yeah, it is. I might have stuck my foot in my mouth there. It's probably dependent on whom you ask whether it's complicated or not. Like I've heard Gifford say, "I like it because it just I could just, it just I could just play. I don't have to think that much." Now maybe that's because he understands it at such a high level. I, I've always got the impression that they, with so many, they make so many calls, they blitz from so many places. It's a, probably a little complicated. Probably depends who you ask. Anyway, who else? How about Bly Hill? Oh God, that's a mover. Back, mover. Back. Mover. How about Deshaun Singleton? Mover shaker. Um, these two guys in the secondary yeah. on that back end. Yeah, Singleton. We what we've heard is Singleton might be the best player in the secondary now. Now that's saying a mouthful because of Giffords back there too, right? You have I Sean. 
I say with great certainty that they have two excellent safeties. I mean, hard hitting Big Ten safeties, good Big Ten safeties. You know, you have an excellent corner in Tommy Hill. Now, the other corner, I think you'll be okay. I mean, I, I'm half convinced that you're going to see Marquise Buford there. What do you think? Yeah, I think Marquise. If it's Buford not Bly Hill er, early, but they have a they have the ability, I think, to play a lot of guys early. And and I'll tell you, UTEP is going to try. And we got to know Scotty Walden a little bit this summer. Scotty Walden, he is going to run a play every 14 seconds if he can. Oh, great. I mean, it's going to be like one of those deals where you can't even type on your keyboard. They're going to they're going to try to go. That's that's how he wants to operate. And he was the coach. So of you're Austin. saying Nebraska will have to play some guys. Yeah, and he was the coach of Austin P. Um, and and obviously did some really good things there too. Um, is there anybody you ha- have any hesitation with right now? Well, I think just in that game, Nebraska for the opener, you have to be ready to play fast and. You're going to have that new helmet headset, the green dot. But when a team runs a no huddle like that, you won't even have much time to uh, talk. Right. Yeah. I, again, I, I wind the comeback, the conversation back to Vincent Shavers. Will he be ready for that? That's a, that, that's a lot. It's just a lot. So much to ask these young guys to be ready for the that. The key is like you have to have your assignments and, and tackle. Because you know if they if they get ahead of the schedule on their downs, then they can go really fast. But mm-hmm. if you get them behind schedule, you got to slow it down. So yeah. those early downs will be very big for Nebraska to have assignment reads yeah. and tackling. That's where all those veterans are so so critical: Singleton, Gifford, Tommy Hill, John Bullock, Javin Wright, all those guys up front. Image. All those guys up front know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. All right, let's go. Before we go to headline number four, Husker on my headlines. Brought to you by Mando. And if you're not familiar with Mando, it is an elite line of men's deodorant products, shampoos, body washes. It's 100% natural, organic, fragrance oil-free. It is dermatologist recommended. Um, It helps reduce and prevent sweat. And we've got a great special. If you want to try out Mando, um, and Michael Severe, by the way, a loyal listener, one of our fact, one of my fact checkers, Michael Severe. He always oh, Severe will get right after. Oh, you. Severe will fact check you. Like I, I probably said something wrong, and I'm going to hear about it. Yeah, but I appreciate that about Michael. I do too. Uh, but uh, you, you, we're going to give you a, a discounted code here with promo code Husker at Mando.com. We are going to give you forty percent off um, with this discount code. It's the Mando Starter Pack. It's going to come with a sticky deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, and free shipping. You have to use the promo code HUSKER at shopmando.com. That's promo code HUSKER at shopmando.com. We're going to take another $5 off that starter pack, and it equates to over 40% off your start um, your, your order there. Thanks again to Mando for sponsoring us here on the Husker Online Show. Okay, <clears throat> headline at number four, um, second scrimmage will be on Saturday. Um, this is kind of the, the, the final rodeo in, in a lot of ways <laughs> before final. August 31st. Yeah, the final rodeo. I mean, you're, you're going to get over 100 plays in. It's going to be live. It's going to be closed down again to everybody. Is it? Do we know that? And but can I can I pull off Troy? I'm try, I'm just going to say I'm Troy Dan and just walk in. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. I there's probably. No, it's closed. Yeah, a handful of exceptions, maybe Dan and Osborne, and then what? The the governor would he let the governor in? Probably. Would Pillen be allowed? I, hey, I met um his brother this week, Cleet, Cleet Pillen. He was at my event in Columbus. Yeah, Cleet was a great, great player. linebacker. Yeah, great, two great players, both Pillens. Um, no, it'll be closed, so we won't know a lot. Um, we'll know what we'll know after the scrimmage when we get a, you know, a, a, some semblance of a report from Matt Rule. Um, now you, the defense is probably looking to tackle better. They didn't remember Tony White said this week he wasn't altogether happy with the tackling. Rule didn't seem to have a lot of complaints about anything. I mean, the it, he said it was pretty balanced. Remember what he said about last year, last week's scrimmage. What Satterfield wants is what you always want is clean execution. It should look clean now. They they went through a scrimmage where it probably wasn't as clean as you want. Now you've had a week of practice to clean up those things. You have a lot of veterans on both sides of the ball. It shouldn't be 
it shouldn't there shouldn't be a lot of missed assignments and ugliness. It should be clean. Well, and, well, Turner Corcoran scrimmage. Okay, so when you get down to personnel, At left that's tackle. a big question. That is a big question. I do think it is important to get Turner a kind of a game like feel. I, that's what I was gonna say. You know, because we yeah. saw that in 2021 against Illinois. Mm -hmm. He was nursing an injury and didn't scrimmage or practice most of August, if not all of August. As you've said a and few he, times, he's been on a pitch count. But I think you're exactly right. I think you want to get him out there against the one defense and see how he holds up. And and and, and have him have that live action, game-like action. Um, and hopefully he builds some confidence from it. Not suggesting that he doesn't have enough confidence, but you can build confidence. So, yeah, I would say I would say he's important. It's always come on. I mean, the, the quarterback play is really important, and the turnover issue, which has not been an issue in this camp, by the way, according to Satterfield, they he says they've done a lot better with that. But that's huge, right? You don't want that final scrimmage to be marred by bad decisions with the ball, right? And then, then you have that eye roll, like, oh, God. Well, go back to that. Okay, let's go back to the, this same scrimmage two years ago. Okay. Who did Matt Rule call out for fumbling? Two years ago? Last year. Last year. Who? Anthony Grant. Oh, God, he did. And made it notable. Oh, God. Well, Was here that we after are, the second scrimmage? Yes. And here we are <laughs> in Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah. 10, 10, 11 days later, oh, they're yeah. trying to ice the game. Right. And what happens? And Anthony Grant fumbled. <laughs> I mean, Matt Rule basically told us. Oh, he foretold it. He was prescient. God, I forgot about that. That was after the second scrimmage. You're right. Oh, my God. Sometimes the elephant's memory comes yeah. into play. I, 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 that's, you nailed that. That's fascinating. But that, that played up. I mean, and I remember when he fumbled like that situation. How pissed were you? As well, just a human being that covers the team and has seen so much, I don't get that angry. You know me. You know me. I don't get angry. I was angry. I was like, are they serious gonna are they seriously gonna piss this game away right now? That's what I was that's what I said. Well, because the fumble, there was still a, a chance to win. I know. And it's incredibly disappointing. Nebraska's defense had played lights out. Oh, P God, yeah. PJ Fleck had to throw 35 times in the second half. Yeah, just complete. So he, he he's a guy that wants to run, run, run. Right. They could not run right. on Nebraska. Right. He, he and, had to go away from the game plan completely. Nebraska's offense, other than like a Jeff Sims run and a trick play that Alex Bullock um, was a part of, that, that was it. I mean, they didn't really yeah. have. Yeah. So no, no. So what we're talking about in this scrimmage is cleanliness. N you know, don't. Not a lot of missed assignments. You don't want the ball on the ground. Not a lot of penalties. So we'll see what we'll see how that looks. God, you're right. The rule. rule the thing about rule is. He will tell you when if it's not good. That fumble, though, along with Sims's play, I mean, th those kind of set the season back early. Yeah, it absolutely did. <laughs> I mean, because uh, it took away any positives at that point. Right. If I'm up there reacting the way I did, how do you think guys like Reimer reacted? Guys like, you know, veteran players like Ramir Johnson, um, for, even for younger guys like Fedoni, how, how angry do you think they were about that? I'm, well, I'm guaranteed they were. Angry. I was talking to somebody, just some of the mistakes, like Sims didn't have a really good ability, as we know, to read the field. Right. And one of his interceptions, like literally, oh God, he just threw, like, it was like a fourth or fifth option that you're really never supposed to throw on this particular play. Gunned it. And he gunned it. And guess who's back there? The best player on Minnesota's team. <laughs> yeah, the safety. Tyler New Nubbin, yeah. first team all Big Ten. Yeah, safety, right? Yeah. And, you know, just things like that, like when you go back to that game. They had no business losing that game. We are bumming people out. I know. But that game, just because, man, my family, I, I think about that trip, how fun my daughters had and my wife. They, they go like, God, this is so, I mean, it was such a great night environment. And to blow it on just a couple of things. All like right. That. We move. All on. right. Yeah. We're, we're trying to get you. Kit, lifted and Car up. Kit and Carly have moved on. You need to. <laughs> they want, like, Dad, can we go back to Mall of America? That's, yeah, that's they don't they, care. But all right. Before we take it. To headline number five, Husker Online headlines also brought to you by Home Field. It is the start of the college football season, and if you're not familiar with Home Field, uh, they are an elite apparel site, and they've got a lot of just custom things, things that you're not going to find at maybe your favorite Husker store or box store. Oh, yeah. 
they carry the the, the cool stuff. You got you got to have a little Steve Sipple swag sometimes to <laughs> maybe pull off some of the home field gear here. But yeah, I don't know much swag. I you don't got much swag. <laughs> but <laughs> go to homefieldapparel.com. That is their website. And we've got a promo code for you. We're giving you 15% off. So you got time. You got two weeks. Wow, look at that stuff. Get, that jacket get, is sweet. Get some new gear uh, for the season. You probably even get it on time for the opener. Uh, we're giving you 15% off at homefieldapparel.com. You got to use the promo code Husker24. That's promo code Husker24 for 15% off at homefieldapparel.com. And you're, you're going to find unique fun, th- not just for football, as you can see. They got basketball, they have volleyball. You can get a throwback Orange Bowl shirt. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I noticed those jackets, those jackets, those kind of old school jackets are very appealing. I could see you wear, wearing a jacket like that. Go back, go back. You see that one right there? Right, the snap, the snap cool. jacket. Looks like something Devaney would have worn, doesn't it? <laughs> Tell me it doesn't. It's Tell old me it school. Doesn't. Yeah, yeah. But homefieldapparel.com. 15% off with that promo code Huskers Husker24. That's Husker24. Thank you again to Home Field for sponsoring us on the Husker Online Show. Okay, final headline. Headline number five, and I wanted to go odds and ends. Um, you know, first and foremost, we didn't hit on this, but camp is going to keep going longer because classes start later here. So it, it is an advantage in some respects for Nebraska um, because the players are not going to be on a class schedule now. They have one more full week. And it doesn't fall like this very often where, you know, you get a four week camp, a, basically a four week camp. Yeah. And here's why it's important. So when classes begin, you enter what's called the 20 hour rule, I meaning you have to go to class. Yeah, they do go to class. That's that's what they're here for. <laughs> um, but y- your meetings and your practice time and your lifting can only be 20 hours of the week. Mm-hmm. You don't get them around the clock right now, though, during camp, unlimited hours. Yeah. And I say around the clock facetiously, but six thirty in the morning till nine o'clock at night. (laughs) It's pretty close to around. Basically, a normal Steve Sipple day. Ah, God, I hope it's no. I'm no. I'm usually yeah, (laughs) pretty close, (laughs) pretty close actually. But I, uh, I I think that is important. And Satterfield answered your question. You asked about it today, and Satterfield went into that bit about situational football. The more you can do, the better. And I will tell you, Sean. I don't know if it's humanly possible to prepare for every situation that can come up in a football game. It's mesmerizing how many situations there are, but you just try to cover as much as you can. And Satterfield talked about it today. You don't want with 11 seconds left on the clock in a game for you to have to call your quarterback over and say, okay, this is what we have to keep in mind. This, 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 and this. No, you want it to have that drilled in their mind and drilled in the coach's mind. Coaches screw that stuff up. We see it all the time. There's some coaches that are better at it than others. There's some writers I've sat with that are really good at it, like late game situations. Parker Gabriel. Parker knew. PC knew what to do. I, I just, I'd, I'd have to have somebody standing next to me. And so the coaches, you know, who's good at it is Glenn Thomas. Satterfield said Glenn Thomas is really good at late game situations, knowing what you know what to do on certain down and distances with and time down distance time that's what you're talking about but and it's easy to do it when no one's around but when it's loud (laughs) oh yeah it's kind of like doing our show last night. right it's easy right now doing the show but when you have 200 people screaming drinking beer right you know you gotta make decisions you you gotta operate it's it's stressful oh god think about the quarterback position and think about the age of the quarterback is you ready for all and you have a play clock and you have to to really ready for all that I mean, that's where the freshman thing sort of it gives you a little pause that it's, you know, I think about random. This is going to sound really random. But remember Matt McGloin, how like, that Penn State quarterback, I, I just always felt like, yeah, that guy know, knows what he's doing. You know, he's an older guy. Um, you can, Redhead guy. Yeah, you can point to guy after guy. McCarthy last, I mean McCarthy last year. Think about Matt that. McGloin. Yeah, I, I don't know why. Are you? Th- I mean, that, that's like Paterno's last quarter. Are you? Yeah, are, are yeah. you thinking? No, I'm thinking about McGloin, not Sean, uh, the other guy. No, I'm thinking about Cl- McGloin. not Clifford. I remember watching McGloin because I was standing on the sideline. I was really impressed by the way he operated. I was on the sideline that that day, 2011, Penn State. Right, it's a long time ago. I could be on the sideline. So him uh, but McCarthy's a better example think about how the McCarthy operator remember when Justin Fields came in here and carved up Nebraska and how dialed in he was nothing seemed to phase him 
I mean, can can Dylan be like that? That's the that's what we're gonna see. And it doesn't fall like this very often where you get this extra week. I mean, it just you're kind of <laughs> held hostage to whatever the university calendars, and it just happens to be classes don't begin this year until the final week of August. Sean, I'm glad you pointed it out because I do think it's meaningful. The more practice. I, mean, I used to kind of gloss over things like that, but the more practice, the better. Mental reps. Oh, mental physical reps. reps. I mean, it's yeah, all big, but it's big. Okay, other moving shaker. I want to hit on this because I do think Nebraska fans will take this, find this interesting. Remember Monte Harrison? Steve I remember Sibble, vividly. Receiver. Um, he was committed to play for Bo Pelini, was drafted 2014 by the Milwaukee Brewers. Mm hmm. Um, and, and the area scout for the Brewers back then was Drew Anderson, former Husker baseball player. God, you have an incredible memory. But there he is. Monte Look Harrison was a dynamic athlete, and now he's at Arkansas. He turns 29 this summer. Oh, no, he turned 20. He just turned 29. Yeah, he just turned 29. And he made the late comeback to join Arkansas. And he's getting first team reps. I, I, I have a friend that covers Arkansas. I used to work with Trey Biddy, and I, I sent him a message. I go, Trey, this guy's good. And he said, he said that he'll travel for sure and he'll play. Took first team reps this week. Still a little rusty, they say. I, I read like a quarterback, one of the quarterbacks was talking about him. He's still a little rusty, but he's, you know what else he is? 6'3, 225 and can run. And All he's right. a professional athlete. I mean, yeah. he's been, but it's, you don't see like the guys that come back from the NFL play receiver or from the, I mean, like an older guy. It, it's usually like a quarterback or, you know, like Damian Jackson. I mean, like you don't see it be like a true skill player. No, right? not like that. You're right. They say too, he doesn't, you can tell when these college guys are talking about him, they're talking about maturity. They say he doesn't, they say he's definitely tired, but he doesn't let you know he's tired and he doesn't show that he's tired. That's maturity. That's what that is. And I, I'd love to, God, I can remember vividly, Sean. Now I was working for the journal store. I wasn't working for you, but I went to Kansas city, stayed overnight at a hotel, did a story about him from a basketball game. And he was a dynamic, like you said, you said dynamic athlete. Oh, God. I, I know he was the fifth rated player in Missouri that year. I'd like to know who the top four were. Well, and and he, he was a free player, too, for, for Arkansas. Because since he went pro, the Brewers will pay his college. Is that true? Yeah. So that, that's part of the deal. When you sign a pro contract out of high school. I didn't know that. The Major League Baseball team you go to, you know, like Bubba Starling, if he ever would have come back, your, your school's paid for. Severe fact check that. No, it's true. It's that, that's that's how they that's get you. That's how they get you to check. come out of high school. Okay, because they say not only are we going to give you this money when you say you go belly up in baseball, we'll pay your education. That's awesome. If that, I think yeah. major league, it's a major league baseball thing in general. So he has made an impression, and that was a Pelini recruit. And it was he went in the second round and he got a one point eight million dollars signing bonus. And he's played in some. He played for the Marlins and some. He, he yeah, got, he, you know what? He really only had a cup of coffee. He didn't. He two home runs, six RBIs. I think is what he fit. I think double severe. Please double check that. But he didn't end up playing very much. I believe Jim Rose's son played with them in Jacksonville. Okay, because uh, you know Jim's son was in Triple A. He didn't have a long. I'm just gonna no. say this. Forget stats. He did not have a long, distinguished major league career. Okay, but at age 29, like what is the end game here? Well, that's a good question. Like, what's he doing it for? Like, you're not, I mean, you're, you're it's a good question. Because if you play college football for three years, you're going to be 32. <laughs> I mean, like, the end game might not, there might not be an end game. Just it might be about living in the moment and saying, you know what? I'm still an athlete. I'm only 29. I still have a lot of juice. And I'm going to go play in the SEC because he obviously loves football. And they, and maybe it's just that simple. Maybe there's not an end game. Maybe it's maybe the game is I want to play. I just want to play. It's fun. I'll never forget when he came to our old rivals camp years ago. It was in St. Louis. It was in the heart of baseball season. Yeah. In April or May, whenever it would have been. He just showed up, not even like, you know, prepared to play football. He was MVP of the camp. <laughs> See, he was a freak. And he beat out Alan Lazard, an yeah. NFL receiver for the MVP award. Yeah, he was a freak. I remember him vividly. I remember that watching that basketball game, and you just kind of laugh, like, "Oh God, yeah." If Nebraska can get this guy, you know, I, that's what you thought. Who, who, who in 2014? Who else was there? Were some big names ar around that time? God, well, I mean, I, Bubba I totally Starling. Put you Bubba Starling was Bubba right was, before that. That yeah. was 2011. Okay, but it was in that era. I mean, Bo Pelini literally had two kind of Kansas City area guys, legends. 
not, two not, legends. Come, not come play for Nebraska. Right. Two legends. Two in on two legends. Bubba probably used Nebraska for leverage, is what was going on there, right? And and it worked. And Monte, I mean, I think a lot of people thought going pro, but Nebraska still took the chance. Now, you wrote down Urban Meyer. Where did you want to go with Urban Meyer? Oh, Urban Meyer had some glowing things to say about Nebraska. It regards them as a possible surprise team. Not a team, not a surprise. Now, he, he doesn't think they can win the Big Ten, but he thinks they can make some noise. He said some really interesting things. He really likes Matt Rule. He likes where the program's going. He said something fascinating, and it's it sort of it sort of validates what I've been saying, including at our show last night, that Nebraska, well, I don't know if I said it during the show. I said it to a couple of fans who I was talking to afterwards. I always bristle when I hear a fan tell me, what's been wrong with Nebraska, Sip? It's not like there hasn't been talent. No, there, there hasn't been enough talent. And that's what he said. I, is it in that quote? Um, no, it's not in that quote. There's a quote that he had right before that. Where, where Urban Meyer said, he said, there was a couple times I was coaching against Nebraska, and I'd look across the field and see their sideline and think, boy, that doesn't look anything like ne Nebraska of old. It looks nothing like Nebraska. That's what I always say. No, well, the, talent has been an issue. Didn't he? I mean, he crossed paths with your radio co-host, Bill Bush, Yeah, when they were in town for like the Fox College game day, and didn't he kind of whisper something of that to Coach Bush? And yeah, it's just like, not the same. Like, what happened to the guys? Right. What, I mean, more or less, like, where'd the guys go? Yeah, Nebraska wasn't terrible, but well, they, they I, were, I think people almost forget what Nebraska looked like in 1997. They looked like Michigan did last year. And here, and here we go. Here we go. He, here's what he said. If I was a player, I'd love to go to Nebraska. It's the, it's the history, the stadium, and the fans. They're incredible. We coached out there, and they've been really down for several years. I was shocked when I was on the sideline a couple times we played against them. You talk about a team that didn't look like a Nebraska mold. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, they, you've seen it. They didn't, Nebraska didn't. Now, they're, they're getting back to that, but they're still not there. When Ohio State runs out of the tunnel, you're going to say, oh, God. Yeah, and watch be, their D line O line drills. Yeah, it's gonna be really rough. I mean, that's they're not they're not probably where well, they're not where Oregon is either. Those teams look different. And that's where Nebraska aspires to get back to. All right. And one other thing I want to slide in here. Jamie Vaughn announced he was our university. Yeah, slide that in. Uh, Texas A and M um what about announced it? the hiring of Jamie Vaughn, who had been the longtime compliance director, senior leadership position at Nebraska. He is leaving here um, to go with Trev Alberts at Texas A&M. Um, and he, I don't believe he'll be in compliance. I think he's going to be in a different role. Uh, but you, you think about the future of NCAA with NIL, in-house payments. What is the need for a compliance officer at that point? <laughs> you still got rules. But like, okay, if, if in-house, <laughs> if they can pay, but if they can pay guys legally over $300,000 or whatever, I mean, because – there's going to be 12 to 15 million a year that's going to go in house to football. I get it. Now, but there's still things like what Jim Harbaugh, the rules Jim Harbaugh broke, recruiting in a time when you were not allowed to recruit. So, recruiting like during a dead period, getting caught doing stuff like that. There's still a need for NCA compliance. It did surprise me, though, that he. I <laughs> think um, there should be no. It, it surprised me he left just because he. Vaughn? Has, he has kind of survived multiple regime changes here. Like he's been a part of several here over the years. Well, I, I hope he understands he's going to a place where the AD's not in charge. It's the trustees that are in charge, the very rich trustees. I wonder if Trev understood that. Um, I've talked to people who have said he's not running the show. The trustees run the show. I mean, that's who runs it. So Lindsey Chamberlain and now Jamie Vaughn are both down there. Doug Ewald, kind of surprising. He, you know, he was kind of Trev's right hand man. He's as of now, we don't. He's not down there, and mm. that's the one guy from the Trev regime that we don't know where he landed. But uh, Jamie Vaughn, I think. I mean, especially this time of year, we're in deep August to see him leave Nebraska. Yeah, and going back to that discussion I just said, I know that sounds really cynical, but you wouldn't say the Board of Regents at Nebraska runs the athletic department, no. would you? No, they don't. They don't overstep. The governor does. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> they don't overstep. At Texas A&M, they do overstep. How many states, though, does the governor attend football practice regularly? Not many. Yeah, Does Pillen attend regularly? 
I mean, you see those SUVs. The former governor did too. Rick gets yeah. attended. I mean, you, when you walk over there, you see the SUV and the and the trooper cars. It's a status thing. It's status, right? Um, that's what you're talking about, probably. Well, we'll have a scrimmage Saturday, covered Saturday. Yes, Saturday, column Sunday. Soccer game number one for Carly. Um, you still need to be at practice. I will. I'll be at practice. It, okay. it all worked out. Coach Rule adjusted the scrimmage time so I could be at the soccer. No, he. I mean, but it's gonna work out. What time? What time are we talking about? What time? Two. The soccer game's at twelve twenty, so I'll, I'm good. Oh, not till two. I'll be writing my column before the. the yeah, the che the cheetahs play at twelve twenty. Cheetahs at twelve twenty. Are you coaching the Cheetahs? I am um, more than. I'm not even like an assistant coach during football. See, I'm more of like a, a senior analyst. Did you lose your job? <laughs> Were you demoted? <laughs> Were you demoted to senior analyst? Tony Heine and Luke Dial are, are the two guys that run the show, especially in the fall. And I, I'm more of a senior advisor analyst role. I, I will be a part of the bench <laughs> in yeah. the YMCA as green lit it now for senior analyst to coach. No, oh, they have no. <laughs> We have three coaches. Some, some teams you watch will just have like one mom coaching, and we have like a staff of three dudes. Oh, my dudes. God. That's <laughs> it's, obnoxious, Sean. So we're, it'd be a big weekend. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a big Saturday ahead then. Heading to Omaha after that. My my mom's throwing a little birthday party for us. So. Okay. Birthday party? Is it your birthday? It's next week sometime. Okay. You know how that is. Moms want to cook for you on your birthday. And oh, yeah. Day. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Well, have a good weekend. We'll see you tomorrow, Sip. Yeah, we'll see you at practice tomorrow. Well, thank you again to everybody that joined us again at Zipline. Uh, God. We heard from so many of you and promise we're going to do one of these again because it was a huge success. And thank you for joining us here on Husker Online Headlines. For Steve Sipple, I'm Sean Callahan.